Guys, today we're going to look at Plug Power and Workhorse, use Stock Analyzer tool and find the value for them and look at their most recent earnings. So Workhorse, this is a stock that's near and dear to my heart. And I say this because they are based in Cincinnati. They're actually right across the street from a gym that I really like to go to every time that I'm in Cincinnati. Now, Workhorse was also a stock that when I started, when I came on Everything Money, this thing was going crazy. This stock had a trajectory just going straight up. We can actually pull up the max chart here. And this was right at the time when I was coming around and this thing just started booming, booming, booming. And up in here, they were supposed to get this massive contract with the United States Postal Service, which was going to put their vehicles, their, their, their electric vehicles into the United States Postal Service. And this was going to make up 10% of the USPS. Now, even being 10% of the USPS, that was 650,000 vehicles. They ended up not getting the deal. A lot of people on YouTube said that no matter what, if USPS gives them the contract or not, they're going to stay in this stock and this stock is going to go way up here. Well, that hasn't happened. And it's come way down here. Now, the question becomes, what do we pay for this company? Let's go and look at their most recent earnings and see exactly what is going on with Workhorse. So this is one of those companies that does a lot of the electric vehicle stuff. Now, I remember looking at the warehouse and saying, okay, how does everything that they're doing happen in this little tiny warehouse? Since that I looked at that, they have moved, they've expanded, they've moved into a place where they can now expand to the amount of trucks that they want to build over a long period of time. For me, a lot of this stuff that's going on in both plug and workhorse, it's just it actually specifically in plug, but a lot in workhorse, it's saying we will do this. We may do this. If, th if this happens, then this will occur. There's no concrete evidence yet. That's where I struggle putting some type of valuation on here, but let's go forward. Sales. Net of returns and allowances for the second quarter of 2022 were recorded at 12.6 thousand compared to 1.2 million the same period last year. The decrease in net sales was primarily due to the decrease in vehicle sales. So how many vehicles are they actually producing? I don't know. Cost of sales uh, decreased $3 million from $14.8 million in the same period last year. So everything is getting worse for them. Selling general... Uh, General and administrative SGNA expenses increased to 13 million from 7 million. Research and development increased, which does make sense. If you're getting, if you're starting out as a new company, trying to expand, trying to grow, your R&D is going to be pretty high. Net interest expense was $100,000 compared to 10.5 million the same period a year ago. Now, the cash situation. They have $140 million in cash. Let's go over to the eight, uh, the Everything Money software and start looking at their balance sheet. Now, revenue is coming in. Actually, let's start with eight pillars. First thing we're going to notice with eight pillars, everything is just bad here. They're a newer company. The thing that really gets me is that share dilution. Now look at these shares. Let's go to the income statement. This was actually an astonishing thing for me to look at. Look at these shares outstanding. In 2013, they had 7.85 million shares outstanding. Now they have 152 million shares outstanding. Even if you're just looking at 2019 through 2022, they have added nearly 100 million shares. I mean, that is just killing you as, as an owner of the, as an owner of the stock. Net income, they do not make money, which is not surprising um, looking at everything that I've just looked at from their, from their expectations. Revenue, it is a negative revenue right now. So not a lot going on. I'd like to see their debt situation before we go forward. Total current assets of 188.65 million. Total current liabilities of 21.5 million. So it's not the worst thing in the world. Now let's look at their cash situation. Not the most ideal. I mean, net income is net income. They don't make any income. So that's going to kill them. Now, I, well, here's the one thing that I do like from this company. <laughs> if, if I have to pick something out, they're not going out and trying to make these crazy acquisitions, trying to buy themselves to prosperity. They're doing it by themselves. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. But if, for the situation that they're in, I can't say that I love it. Let's do a quick stock analyzer tool. Now, guys, first things first, one year profit margin is 22,000, 300%. I mean, the, when I look at a company like this, what company did we do last week? Uh, Nate, was it Rivian or something like that? I, either way, I was making wild assumptions on this. Maybe it was Nikola, something like that. And it came in for me when, it, when the uh, algorithm spit it out like 50 cents a share or something. Guys, I, I don't know where to put this. We can try. I don't know how reliable it is, but let's just go with it. So let's say over the next decade, this company workhorse puts in, let's do 20, 30, and 40% revenue. A little rich, but they do have a lot of growth potential if they do take off. There's no doubt. Probably go even higher than, than that, which is kind of wild. Um, profit margin, I'm going to go 10, 15, and 20. Unheard of in the car industry, but let's do it. Free cash flow, I'll do the same thing just for S's and giggles. 20. PE, I will give them a... 
20, 25, and 30 PE because everything else is out of control. So why don't we just make those numbers out of control? 25 and 30, I think, and I'm going to put in for my return, I will do a 17% return. And the reason I do 17%, if I'm going to invest in a company this risky, I want to beat the market. I want to crush the market. And what is our analysis? I mean, we're in negative. I can't even get to positive numbers here. This doesn't mean that the company is worthless. This means that I don't know what to put here. I mean, I could change these numbers all day, as you guys know. I could put in revenue growth of 75%, profit margin of 20, we'll leave that, PE of 60, and I'll put in an annualized return of 10%, and that is going to spit out to me, still negative, okay. Guys, I don't know what to tell you for this one. This is a company where you're just going and hoping that things work out for you. Guys, if you're new to this channel, my name is Mo. I work with Paul and we are value investors together. We use our eight pillar software. Personally, we use that software to go through and find starting points on companies. We look at these numbers and if there's a reason for us to dig deeper, then we do that. We exist to teach you guys a process. This is the same process that I use and I have, have learned alongside Paul to make myself better in the investing world. When you have a sound process, it helps you become a better investor, options trader, charts reader, what have you. Guys, at the end of this video, I will show you guys some charts and we will get into that as well. Now I'm going to hit you with Plug Power, another one of these bangers. So let's look at Plug. This is supposed to be the big hydrogen company. Um, they are... Now here's the thing that I learned out of reading this quarterly report. So Plug Power reports $153 million in revenue for Q2, reaffirms the guidance that they have going forward. Something that was that really stood out to me in this, uh, here I just highlighted some things. So you, see, you guys see PTC, production tax credit, P, uh, TPD is tons per day. You see it a lot throughout these 18 or 20 pages, whatever it is. So a lot of things that I saw, it was just, if this happens, then we will be able to move forward. Or, or it was all just these promises that are looking into the future, which is fine. I understand understand they're a new company and that's fine. But you as an investor need to understand, I can't just go on hopes and dreams. I have to have concrete numbers. I have to have concrete information. I have to have concrete product before I start going and paying some type of premium for this newer company. So right now, they're, they are the one big thing that they're touting is this Inflation Reduction Act that was passed yesterday uh, and signed into, into law, which is going to help them for, uh, the, they said, for climate change, for good energy and jobs going forward. We remain focused on building out the green hydrogen generation network with targets of 70 tons per day uh, commissioning by the end of 2022, 500 tons per day in North America by 25 and 1000 tons per day globally by 2028. And that was the big takeaways that I saw. Everything else that I saw in this thing was kind of, if this happens, then it will be good X for what have you. So, you know, let's go, let's go and look at plug power. I will say for you traders out there, plug is actually one of my favorite stocks to trade just because the volatility is wild and it's fun to get. Now, revenue growth. <clears throat> this is a little bit better than Workhorse, what we saw. Not that I'm comparing them, but they had they had uh, no pillars. This has one. Now, let's go to the income statement because the first thing I want to look at when I see a company like this is what are they doing with shares? And they're doing the kind of the exact same thing. 40 and a half million shares in 2013. Uh, yep, 2013. 578 million shares in 2022. And even if you look at this in 2020, they've nearly doubled the amount of shares outstanding. So for you as a shareholder, you've been nearly cut in half of what you own of the company. Net income, they do not make money, which is not terribly surprising. They are driving revenue, uh, which they did say. Let's check out their debt situation. I like to look at total current assets and total current liabilities. Total current assets of $4.1 billion. Total current liabilities of $358 million. So that's not not terrible. Now the long-term liabilities is something else, a whole different story. And their cash situation. They've touted their cash situation in that document. Um, they did go out and do some type of acquisition. So they're a little bit more active in that world. Now let's run a stock analyzer real quick on this. A little bit more practical numbers. Just, uh, I mean, we have here, or at least we're working in hundreds and not 22,000s, which we were working on with Workhorse, but let's move forward. So revenue growth over the next 10 years. I'm going to go, I'll go 15, uh, 20, and 25. Uh, profit margin. So this is a tough one. What is, I mean, this is a new industry. We don't really have an industry to compare this off of. It's, it's hydrogen space. Yes, there are other hydrogen companies out there, but are there any reliable ones out there that are doing it on a grand scale? No, there aren't. So profit margin, I'm going to go and I'm going to put in 8, 16, and I'll put 24 just to kind of spread that out. I don't know if the 24 number is profitable. I'm going to do the same thing for free cash flow and PE. I will do 20, 23, and 26. 
Same thing for price free cash flow, 26. And of course, if I am going to get some kind of crazy, uh, if I'm going to do some kind of investment here, I'm going to put in 15% across the board. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go 17% across the board because if I do, I do want more margin of safety in there. And what am I going to spit out? Okay. So current stock price right now is about $28 and 60 cents. And I'm sitting in a range from $2 to $15 and 50 cents. Now remember how practical are these numbers? That's what really the question becomes. How practical is it that you're going to get 25% revenue growth, 24% profit margin at a 26 PE and get an annualized return of 17% over the next decade? How practical is that? I don't know. I guess that's for you to go do more research and figure out what exactly the company is going to do to achieve those numbers. All right, guys, if you stuck around this long, I'm going to transition to charts. And if, if you have ever been interested in reading charts, that is exactly what we're going to do here. And I'm going to pull up plug power for you. Plug is... I like trading plug power more than I like trading workhorse just because to me, it has a little bit more true volatility, meaning that I kind of have a gauge of which direction things are going to go and they don't happen as fast. So this is a swing trading chart for plug power. And you can see this has been an awesome, awesome swing trade for the past, oh, 10 days. It had some really great engulfing candlesticks, really good volume. I mean, something that I look at right here. I mean, you have an average volume here of 25 million shares traded per day. That means that you have constant activity on a stock like this. So this is something that you really, as a tra if you get into trading, you'll really understand that the more volume you have, the better. So we entered through the sweet spot really nicely here. We had an incredible run through the 200 day moving average because we had such great volume. And now we're just peaking higher and higher and higher. If I'm you or I'm trading this, I'm seeing a lot of resistance here about this $30 range. So what, what does that mean? That All that means is if I'm in this, just take some profits up here. Let it start rolling back down. This stochastic will start rolling back down and you'll have a beautiful, beautiful short. The great thing about trading is that you can make money going up and you can make money going down. And making money going down is a lot easier than making money going up because stocks go down a lot faster than they go up. Last thing, guys, if you have not seen Paul demonstrate our full eight pillar process, catch it right here and I'll catch you on the flippity flop.